Hola. Hey. Happy Monday. Uh, I'm Samuka. My name is Kevin or Phil. <laughs> and we're going to have a trilateral conversation. Yeah. So this video is the postscript or post discussion of the paper that I just read. No, that was 10 minutes ago or, or half an hour ago. Um, and that paper was largely inspired by Zach Numbers' videos, but also the... He's the ZZZ333 guy. And also the work of Daniel Quinn, Derek Jensen, John Zerzin, and um, the anarcho-primitivist uh, story of what's happening in general. Um, and all of this is in, in the same matrix as the peace gatherings, uh, which garnered some response from the uh, anti-civilization. And we'll post a link to the Wikipedia page of that describes the anti-civilization, anarcho-primitivist viewpoint. It basically says that all of civilization is a wrong turn for humans to make and that civilization is destroying planet Earth and the only solution is to completely abolish industrial civilization and return to a very primitive uh, lifestyle of primarily hunter-gathering. That's, that's a general overview of the anarcho-primitivist perspective and we were part of this peace gathering the other day and there was a person f coming from that viewpoint criticizing why the hell are you guys having a peace gathering because what you really need to be doing is resisting the system and we both have read a lot of these books by Derek Jensen and watched a lot of Zach Numbers videos and uh, really have gone through a lot of different perspectives so that's what we're going to explore in this video right that's good if that makes sense yeah so so we'll just go back and forth with ideas here and, and Pavel our friend might throw in some stuff too. we might have a third yeah. member <laughs> um so in in my response I talked a lot about how being the change we want to see in the world and um, and how how our perceptions and our beliefs can shape the external reality um, and one thing I noticed after reading Daniel Quinn and Derek Jensen was that I was filled with such anger and um, I was I was in a very negative place for a long long time and we were talking Phil and I today earlier today about how that was really important during that time for you know I was this like consumer drone just going along in my in my world my habitual mind patterns and then I read Ishmael and I was like holy cannoli like I am a robot and uh, it broke open my head and for that purpose those Ishmael served a great um, it was a great instrument in breaking open my head for the first time um, did, did you want to say anything about your experiences with reading yeah, Ishmael. well, I first read Ishmael, and then I was like, oh my god, I need more answers, so I read all of Daniel Quinn's other books, well, a bunch of his other books, and then after Daniel Quinn, I started reading Derek Jensen's books, where Derek Jensen kind of further explores uh, Daniel Quinn's books, and Derek Jensen, for me, really articulated so many of the things that I felt deep down, but I couldn't quite put into words. And he really took a look at our culture 
and and really pinpointed all these ways in which it's fucked up. Like there's he just is so good at articulating the what's wrong with the, the absolute wrongness of the system, and it is very much dysfunctional. And Sam and I have both kind of read a bunch of Daniel Quinn's books, then a bunch of Derek Jensen's books, and then we started reading the work of Charles Eisenstein, who I feel really is like the third link in that chain that kind of brings it all together, because um, as Sam was saying, in the Derek Jensen mindset, it's like everything is fucked up, everything is wrong, and there's no way out of it, the only thing we can do is fight the system. Whereas Charles Eisenstein is saying, maybe, maybe these things are wrong and dysfunctional, but they're p- kind of part of an evolutionary process, and um, and just like on a personal level, you have to go through some really hard stuff in order to break out of uh, a pattern, and so that's possibly what we're happening on a collective level. Right, it's part of an organic process of becoming. And Charles also says that when we first start identifying the wrongness of the world, we are continually trying to keep identifying it because, well, for one, because it's, we have to remind ourselves that we're not crazy, that, you know, if like if the world were really falling apart then people would be more concerned about it right like i must be i must be nuts cuz i'm the only one that seems to be caring about all this so we we're constantly trying to find faults with the world around us to convince ourselves that we are sane that there really is something wrong and we're not happy and we're not being fulfilled etc mhm so that's something that's a, one of Charles's insights on discovering, beginning to, sco- to discover your place and beginning to discover really what's happening right now on planet Earth. And when I first started realizing all this stuff, I, I was just completely blown away by the statistics on tele- television like for example the average American watches four and a half hours of television every single day so if you add that up that's 11 years of our lives are spent in front of a digital screen being fed information from four corporations and when I first learned that I was like what the fuck and so I took I took every one of my t-shirts and I wrote like less TV more real life and that's all I wore every single day I was so passionate about like telling people this information like it's so horrifying and that's just one tiny little piece of it I mean Derek Jensen does that analysis of TV to like every aspect of our culture he does it beautifully yeah and and so in this video we're kind of reaching out to you who are other people who are interested in Derek Jensen's ideas and and trying to engage in a discussion because we feel that having things like peace gatherings and building community in Zach if you're watching this your most recent video you said you're done blaming people and you want to help create things and that's kind of our perspective too in that we have a lot more power when we're creating something new instead of fighting against this dysfunctional thing that's already there right and, yeah I don't have anything to and answer. like the the metaphor I often give is like if if McDonald's if you eat there your whole life and it gives you cancer and makes you really fat and then you're like holy shit I'm all fat now and I hate my life so you have a choice to go up and like smash all the windows of McDonald's and get really angry at them and and protest them get a whole crew to like get their signs out with statistics like McDonald's it has factory farms and they use hormones and stuff and you can protest them or you could put all your energy into a local food market or a permaculture backyard and you could be having a wonderful time every day 
and actually healing yourself instead of spending all that energy and anger fighting against McDonald's, you could just divert it into um, into positive action. Right. And we, we were talking a lot about creating alternatives um, and the kind of alternatives that can emerge when you kind of accept the situation instead of resist it. And this is, as I wrote and talked about, this is kind of a Zen or Taoist philosophy uh, or underpinning, and that is yielding with the intent of creating something new. And kind of, it's kind of the idea that being malleable to and adaptable and flexible to situations um, actually gives you more power. And I mentioned the Lao Tzu quote about water being able to overcome all forces, yet it's so supple and it's, it's not a strong force. Um, physically. So we talked we talk a lot about civilization being inherently unsustainable, but I feel and I think we feel that it's as it is now it is unsustainable, but I mean imagine like a civilization full of permaculture gardens as you just mentioned mm-hmm. or a civilization based on um, mutuality and and uh, establishing co-creative partnership with what Charles Eisenstein calls lover earth and I mean the possibilities are really infinite and it's up to us to just be open to to a lot of things instead of narrowing in our attention and our focus um, because it, things are always changing and we need to act and live with an open heart while accepting other people and um, accepting where others are in this process of the gift called living on planet earth yeah so. and and sort of going along with that I mean just as far as creating a sustainable civilization I think that um, in Zach, if you're watching this again, maybe we can post a link to it. You have a video called The Fourth Future, which I remember, and it's all about um, creating pretty much this vision that the Transition Town movement is establishing. And the Transition Town movement is this global movement where each, each city or town focuses on producing producing things locally there so instead of importing all this stuff which Derek Jensen explains is extremely unsustainable and you have to use um, all these destructive means to get things if you meet your needs at a local level which is what the transition town movement is fostering then we don't really need to exploit these huge amounts of land and blow up mountains and stuff if we're producing things locally so I highly recommend checking out the Transition Town movement as a possible alternative to being completely anti-civilization. And um, yeah, we'll post some, some links that relate to this, but we'd really love your input and your video responses or comments on these topics because um, I personally feel that it's really horrifying being in that mind state of seeing everything around you as absolutely wrong and feeling like there's nothing you can do about it and I feel like just at least entertaining the possibility that maybe this is part of an evolution maybe we're kind of in a larger process and because we're zoomed in on it it seems like everything's shaking you know in spontaneous evolution they say the caterpillar right before it turns into a butterfly it's like all the cells of the caterpillar are like red alert red alert you know everyone's dying all this shit's happening and and everyone's freaking out and then it's like oh a quantum jump happens and a new organism is is born yeah with the same with the same dna exactly they're just 
the, the cells of the butterfly are responding to a new signal than the cells of the caterpillar. So that's the word. But please share your input, share your ideas. Do you think civilization is unsustainable? What other questions? Um, I guess basically the, the traditional question in the, among the anarcho-primitivists is what can you do to stop civilization from destroying the planet? And I would suggest that we transform the question into are, are my actions contributing to healing or are they contributing to destruction? And from that question, we can figure out our actions and everyone's got a role to play and everyone has their unique gifts and playing music is a gift that is part of the new world and or the new humanity and so is art and so is culture and all these awesome things that make us human and give us joy and help us connect so um, so I encourage you to as Phil says to find your niche among the symphony of instruments yes, and yes. let's the goal is to create a more beautiful world and if you live by that guiding principle then um, it's a, it feels good and it's a good thing yeah so, so I think it really boils down to um, how are you creating the world that you want to live in whether that's bringing down civilization or what how how can you contribute towards that new world and I feel like it's it's much as you said it's much more fulfilling to create something than to try to destroy something so please share your share your questions comments video responses anything else Scooby do you want to get in this? Happy Monday. Peace. Farewell. <laughs>